Well, moving into our second story today, speaking of Congress, this kind of relates to it. Our nation's fiscal policy is a disaster and has been a disaster for literally decades. Well, you got 24 senators signing a letter opposing the debt ceiling increase absent spending reform. Two dozen Republican senators have signed a letter to President Joe Biden noting that they do not plan to vote to raise the debt ceiling unless action is taken to address the nation's spending problem. I freaking love this. Thank you, God. Finally, somebody's rising up here that was elected by the people for the people to speak on behalf of the people going, this is irresponsible. We can't keep raising the debt ceiling. If you're curious, you guys, on how much we owe, I just actually looked it up today. At this moment in time, it's about three point. Sorry, three point. Well, forgive me here. Thirty one point five trillion dollars we owe. And that's only increasing. So they want to raise it even more. You guys, thirty one point five trillion. That's ninety five thousand dollars per citizen, not taxpayer per citizen. That's about two hundred something thousand dollars. Let's say two hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollars per taxpayer. You and your wife would owe or spouse would owe $500,000 to the government. That doesn't include state. That's just federal, by the way. If we were called on it tomorrow, to pay off this debt. It's irresponsible, you guys. The vast majority of Americans don't have anything anywhere near $250,000. I mean, eight of every 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I think it's somewhere in the realm of a certain percentage of baby boomers don't even have $1,000 saved for retirement. And they're retiring right now. So let's just... Comp- be complete idiots with all this stuff consistently and keep raising the debt ceiling so somebody else has to pay for it. It's irresponsible. So I love, I love that you got these 24 GOP that are finally saying enough is enough. The lawmakers conveyed their, quote, outright opposition to a debt ceiling hike without real structural spending reform that reduces deficit spending and brings fiscal sanity back to Washington. I mean, the question here is, did Washington really have ever sanity in terms of any sort of policies other than the policies removing our rights or wanting to chisel away at them or put some sort of burden upon the American people. I mean, Congress just sucks at their job. The government sucks at their job. I mean, anybody disagree in the comment section? They suck at their job. Hopefully they fix this and maybe don't suck as much. It is the policy of the Senate Republican Conference that any increase in the debt ceiling must be accompanied by cuts in federal spending of an equal or greater amount as the debt ceiling increase or meaningful structural reform in spending, such as Prevent Government Shutdown Act or the Full Faith and Credit Act, we intend to stand by that policy. Now, there is a myth out there that a uh, majority of our $31 trillion uh, you know, is just going to be erased in some way, shape, or form. There's also another myth out there that the majority of our budget goes towards military. The vast majority, I think upwards of like 70 or 80% of our uh, budget is social programs like social security and Medicare, Medicaid, stuff like that. So it's a huge, I mean, you're, I think I think our military budget is like 20%. Somebody write it in the comments below. I'm, again, I'm pulling this off the top of my head. But I think when you throw in education, health, um, and uh, military as well as defense spending, I think that's like about 25% of our budget. So again, uh, it's just a myth. We need to chisel away at the social programs, which Karine Jean-Pierre did say on the podium during White House press briefings that Republicans want to chisel away or reform some sort of this um, social spending that we're utilizing. I think that's a good call. We have to, you guys. And I came up with the idea of like, well, why don't we grandfather everybody in starting today that's already paid into Social Security? And then anybody that hasn't paid into Social Security yet, you know, you're not you're not grandfathered in. You don't get your Social Security. You can utilize the money that you take on your take-home pay to invest that yourself into 401k, 403b, you know, uh, uh, tangible, intangible assets, whatever you want to do with it, you can invest that any way, shape or form you feel like. But I think that since you've already paid in the system, you should be able to pay it paid out. Somebody also did write in the comments of they would more than happy take their refund of what they paid into the system and invest that into a 401k or some sort of investment vehicle. And you'd probably get a better rate of return than you would in your social security. I think there's definitely a lot of truth to that. I would love to take my social security that it's every paycheck and invest it rather than give it to the government, knowing full well that I probably won't see majority of that money later on in life if I'm only getting 70%, 60% of that cut because it's going to go insolvent at some point. Well, again, America's massive and ever-increasing national debt is currently more than $31 trillion. Our nation's fiscal policy is a disaster. Our country owes $31 trillion. You guys, try to just, in, in your mind, fathom $31 trillion. I can't do it. A level of debt that now well exceeds the size of our economy. This is the letter that's being proposed to Joe Biden, by the way. We do not intend to vote for a debt ceiling increase without structural reforms to address current and future fiscal realities, actually enforce the budget, 
and spending rules on the books and manage out of control government policies. Now, I could be wrong here, and maybe I should have looked it up before I started recording, but maybe somebody might know off the top of their head or just leave it in the comments or the live chat. I don't think Congress has anything in place that allows them to create a budget that's fiscally responsible, meaning that they are not allowed to spend, they're not allowed to spend what they don't have. Meaning you, if you can't just put something on credit, if you don't have the money, then you can't spend it. They need something like that bill to be written. I mean, hell, you could put it in one sentence, cannot spend more than we have. Like create a budget that way. What, what's amazing to me is these people are elected, as I said, for the people, by the people, to speak on behalf and do things for the people. And they're managing things. I mean, to put it in a very PG way, because it's YouTube, uh, irresponsibly. They're being knuckleheads with all this stuff. And we're the ones that are going to have to pay for it at the end. Like we're the ones shooting ourselves in the foot by electing these people over and over again. And I get that there's empathy that we need because some of these social programs really do help people. I'm not saying get rid of the social programs, but I'm saying definitely chisel away at them. This is ridiculous. I think of our total, of our total budget that we spend, it's like 4.6 trillion. I think of the 6.6, I think like 4.6 trillion is social programs or something. Like I said, it's 70 or 80% of our budget or something like that. You guys, you can't have empathy in politics because empathy in politics is harmful. Yes, we all want to do good to others. We all want others to be okay. We want to help them. We want that safety net and that safety net should be there. But this is getting ridiculous. This is getting, I mean, the, the aspect of the locality of you helping your neighbor, you 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 utilizing the mechanics of your church to, to give back to charity and, and work through that to uplift your locality, your neighborhood, your fellow countrymen. Like we need to be come back to that as a country. And as far as I'm aware, I think this can be a little bit tough to get there because we are removing or have removed for quite some time uh, religious aspects from the school system and just from the family structure as a whole. I mean, faith in God, faith in Christianity, Judeo-Christian values have really decreased in this country. And you've really seen a negative effect of those Judeo-Christian values plummeting in terms of people retaining those traditions in their life or their family. And here you have the government acting like knuckleheads, not upholding the certain traditions that we should have a country, not acting responsible. And, uh, and it's, it's really going to plummet you guys. It's going to be a dark day when we have to pay this back. There's only, there's only a couple ways of doing it. Print more money, which is going to increase inflation as well as increasing taxes. You know, I, I don't know what more to say about this, but what's going to wake people up? And I think the only thing that's going to wake people up is they're going to feel the effects of this and they're not going to be able to pay their bills. They're going to struggle buying food at the grocery store because their taxes are so high. That's just going to paying off our debt. It's not going to building new roads. No, no, no. It's not going to build new infrastructure, things that we actually need to use our money on. It's not going to go to the education system. It's not going to go to the military. It's just to pay off the interest of the debt. And then we got to worry about the principal. So the, the, this is a big deal. Like I said, this and, and illegal immigration are my number one and number two issue. And because I see a dark future with both happening because they both hurt this country. I'm not saying legal immigration hurts this country. I am for legal immigration. I have friends that are legal immigrants. Uh, my father was a legal immigrant. So you do the paperwork, you come here, you do the things you're supposed to do. Uh, I think you should have a right to be a citizen of this country. But if you're going to just cut the line and basically give the burden to everybody else that's been waiting in line, that's paid their money, that's trying to get citizenship here, that's actually a benefit to this great country. You know, I, I think that's a little messed up and I think that's a little wrong. And again, that's a little bit of a PG version because we got to be careful what we say here on YouTube. But let me know what you guys think about this, because I think we really need to have a conversation about this in the comment section below about is this a good thing should what part of the budget you let me know should we start chiseling away we can't keep doing this you guys not like well mm, we gotta chisel away at this or that but not this something needs to give and we got to explain to each other what what needs to be removed here and i i personally think it's social programs i don't think you can chisel away at military you guys you got china wanting to invade taiwan you got russia invading ukraine you got iran that wants to wait wipe literally western civilization off the planet so what do you do you should be building up your military. That's one of the main functions of government is to protect its citizenry or to citizens at the very least, right? So uh, these social programs have been blown out of proportion ever since FDR. Um, there needs to be, I think, a strong talk of honestly, maybe just getting rid of social security altogether, uh, limiting Medicare and Medicaid. I mean, that's, that's easier said than done because a lot of people going into retirement now, you got a lot of the baby boomers retiring. So again, like I said, this is a great conversation. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.